Can't put over these bare arms. Time was still under evaluation when the first US Army examples arrived in theatre in 1962. In Vietnam, they performed almost all the military marine performance. All you could think of, air assault, medical evacuation, general purpose transport, gunship and so on. You could use Hueys alone to undertake almost a complete assault mission. Some transporting troops in, others fitted with machine guns or rockets, providing protection. There's over 7,000 of these helicopters served in Vietnam of which more than 3,300 were destroyed and circa 2,200 of their crew members lost. This is one of the Hueys that served in Vietnam, the 129th Assault Helicopter Company from 1972 to 73. To give you an idea of the heroism of the Huey crews, I'll talk for a moment about the recipient of the, me uh, recipient of the Medal of Honor, James P. Fleming, a U.S. Air Force Lieutenant flying a Huey. The citation reads, a conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity in action, at the risk of his life, above and beyond the call of duty. Captain Fleming, then first lieutenant, distinguished himself as the aircraft commander of a U.H. 1F transport helicopter. Captain Fleming went to the aid of a six-man special forces long-range reconnaissance patrol that was in danger of being overrun by a large, heavily armed hostile force. Despite the knowledge that one helicopter had been downed by intense hostile fire, Captain Fleming descended and balanced his helicopter on a riverbank with a tail boom hanging over open water. The patrol did not penetrate to the landing site and he was forced to withdraw. Dangerously low on fuel, Captain Fleming repeated his original landing maneuver. Disregarding his own safety, he remained in his exposed position. Hostile fire crashed through his windscreen as the patrol boarded his helicopter. Captain Fleming made a successful takeoff through a barrage of hostile fire and recovered safely at a forward base. Just one man, just one mission, but what a story. The smaller of the two helicopters up above are Hughes, LH-6A Cayuse, known as the Loach, a play on the original requirement, LOH, Light Observation Helicopter. Built by the Hughes Company, you can see it's got a very egg-like body shape which offered good survivability. It could accommodate six people with the rear seats folded down. It's light alloy, rotor blade, simple and durable, a good configuration all round for a battlefield helicopter. They went straight into action in Vietnam in 1968. They were often used out there as part of a team with Bell AH-1 Cobra attack helicopters. The Loach was seeking out to mark the targets using colored smoke. The Cobra was the attack the Loach. also carried its own armament, 7.62mm machine guns and grenade launchers. And in fact, this one from MSS Holdings, as is the Huey, has a decommissioned 7.62mm six-barrel minigun mounted on its port side. This one was built in 1969 and was sent directly to Vietnam, joining the US Army's 20th Transport Company. And it really is a warbird in itself. On the 17th of August 1940, while on a reconnaissance sortie over South Vietnam, this very helicopter was flying at 100 feet when it was hit by a small arms fire. It took 11 hits on its underside, damaging the fuel system and some components. Of the three crew, just one was slightly injured. The helicopter made a forced landing and later it was declared unflyable. It was shipped back to its manufacturer Hughes, it was repaired, transferred to the Army National Guard and various support units, latterly with the Drug Enforcement Agency, which was sold on in 2004, when Bill Connolly bought it to add to his Huey. In the restoration process, bullet holes and patches related to its Vietnam service were discovered. It was restored, like the Huey, into its original Southeast Asia theatre colours. We see here a little of the maneuverability of the Qt H6 design. And that's stood this helicopter and its direct successes in very good stead. The Lotus took on a new role after the failure, the embarrassing failure of Operation Eagle Claw, the 1980 Iranian hostage rescue of US Embassy staff in Tehran. There was a need then for a small special operations helicopter better able to operate in very confined spaces. The results were the MH6 and the armed AH-6 version, both of which were dubbed the Little Bird, and they have been used in many U.S. operations. 1983's invasion of Grenada, 1980's activities against the Iranian mine laying in the Persian Gulf, the invasion of Panama, Operation Just Cause in 1989, 1991's Gulf War, 
1993, they went into battle in Mogadishu against Somali militants. They fled in Operation Iraqi Freedom and others, of course, much modified, newer build examples than this one, but still very much a development of the same helicopter. And now, as a Boeing product, it's still being developed. Little Birds remain in US Army service. And there's also an unmanned Little Bird UAV version now available. What a legacy for the Vietnam War's loach. MSS Holding, the operator of these two helicopters, a very enthusiastic team indeed. They're both based at Wesham, near Preston in Lancashire. What a splendid job Phil Connolly and his colleagues have done of putting them back into their original Vietnam era colours and configurations. We think of warbirds as being stiff fired mustangs and the like. Well, these two are very definitely rotary wing warbirds. And very nicely flown indeed, the loach in the hands of IF helicopter instructor Dick Barton and the Huey in the hands of Neil Airy.